let's take a look at using our scanner to scan our art in. So I'm using an Epson V39 scanner. Really any scanner you have is fine. This is a nice little zippy scanner that's very lightweight and I can carry it with me. And what I like about this versus one of those all-in-one scanner printer combos is I had a scanner printer combo for my last scanner and it was super slow and it just sucked my solder I had to scan with it. So I want you to pick a zippy scanner, nice quality, as nice a quality as you can afford for a scanner because you know the, the better your scanner the better your prints will be but this one has been a really super nice one for me and it's nice and zippy. And what I want you to make sure to do before you ever get started scanning is make sure that the scanner bed is clean from prior artworks, dust, fingerprints, what have you. So my favorite way to do that is to use a microfiber cleaning cloth. These are fantastic. You can get them at the hardware store. You can get them at the grocery store. These things are everywhere now. And you can go through and make sure that you get your dust and prints and debris off your scanner bed. You can do this with paper towels, but what I don't like about paper towels is they leave uh, paper debris on them. So this, you can spray a little cleaner on here if you need to, wipe it off, dust free, and you're set to go. So that's number one. Number two is you wanna line your piece of artwork up with a flat square edge. This one wants you to line it up with this lower right corner. So you simply wanna line that up close the cover and then generally what you might consider doing is either holding that cover down nice and flat so that there's no air kind of in between the cover and the paper and you get like a nice tight scan which is especially good if your scan has any warpage on the paper at all that'll hopefully flatten that out for you the other thing that you can do is place a big heavy book on that scanner cover and that way you're not stuck sitting there trying to scan trying to hold it down while you're trying to set your scan settings on your computer so nice heavy book perfect for that the other thing that i want to talk about is once you pick this up you, so let's say you've scanned it and you're ready now you've got new art debris on your screen so i want you to take your microfiber cloth and just clean that off before you scan again and most of the things I scan are about a 9 by 12 piece of paper size because that's about as big as my scanner scans. And we can stitch together larger pieces in Photoshop, but if you're going to do that, let me just talk a bit. Once you put this on, as big as it'll scan, you put this down, put your book on it, scan that in, then you want to come back and as careful as you can scoot that down so that it's still nice and flat in with the page put your scanner down put the book on top and then that way you're going to get the best scan you can of the couple of different pieces of your page if you've got something any larger than that you can certainly try to scan it in multiple edges at a time but depending on how big it is you may consider getting that professionally scanned or you may consider photographing that so this is how i would scan something that's not too too large and we're going to stitch it together in photoshop and i'll show you how i do that in photoshop and again when i pick this up I'm going to go ahead and wipe off the scanner bed and we'll be ready to scan. So I'm actually going to scan one of these in. So let's get that set up. Let's get our book on the paper and let's start talking about scanning this in. So once we have our piece of art on our scanner and we're ready to scan, you can open up the scanner software on your computer and then you can make some selections as you need. So I usually leave this in photo mode because it's the only mode it gives me but for scan settings I leave it on not selected because I'm not really photographing any of the preset options that it gives me in this little settings box and you got to be careful using these settings and test them out test out each one on whatever you're scanning to see how it's going to change those 
saturation levels and setting levels for that photo because I found out the hard way if you pick photograph for a piece of art it kind of saturates the photo in a little bit different way and we'll take a look at that when I show you the prints that I ordered because I was experimenting to see which one was going to give me um, a closest match so I actually found it just be, did better not selecting one of those presets and then doing my edits in Lightroom or Photoshop. So that's kind of important. If you're looking at that thinking, should I pick Photograph? I probably wouldn't because it's going to saturate it differently. Um, the document source is over on the scanner and then there's no other choice there with reflective. It's a color image and then you have DPI options. And I think it's fun to be able to print your artwork much larger than the original. So these originals are around a five by seven or four by six kind of size um, inch wise. And maybe I want to print that as a great big gigantic print to hang on the wall. And so to do that, we can pick a higher DPI than what the original might be. So 300, 240 or 300 would scan it at about the original size and you would not be able to really blow that up. But if you'll go to say like 1200, 1600, 2400, now that's kind of multiples of the original size. 1200 is, you know, four or five times bigger than the original that you could easily blow that up to. So I want you to pick at the minimum 1200. But if you've got the time and you want to make these big enough, go a little higher. And the higher that you go, the longer it'll take to scan because it's going to take more effort to do that scan. So let's just pick 12, uh, 1600 for today. And we'll go ahead and say image format JPEG or or TIFF. So a lot of times I will scan in at a JPEG and that's just fine. Um, it is the smallest file type and if you want the very best quality file that you can get to start with then scan it as a TIFF and then you have more information and more stuff to work with and it's just the very best quality uh, scan that we're going to be able to get. So pick a TIFF uh, file name you can you know take the file name it gives you and change it later which is what I do I don't really worry about trying to set a custom name at this point and then you can tell it where you want it to scan to and it'll scan to that place so you could make like a scan folder on your desktop and say put all the scans in the scan folder or you can just do it to your desktop and move things after you've got that done so let's go ahead and hit the scan let's hit the preview I preview it first so I can select out what I want it to actually scan. So this is our preview and I do a preview so that I can select what I want to scan rather than the printer or the scanner selecting. And you simply have to come here and draw a box around what you actually want it to scan. And sometimes I will draw a selection that's very tight on the art itself and with no white border. Sometimes if it's a weird shape, I'll go ahead and let it scan a little bit of the border, but I'll probably end up cutting that off in Photoshop or Lightroom because when I print that, I can print it with a nice crisp white border of that paper rather than whatever paper it was I was working on which is kind of preferable because if I'm working on an ivory colored watercolor paper but I'm printing on a bright white paper I don't want that ivory part to stop and then the white to start I want those to all to kind of blend so I want the art itself to be scanned or cropped down to real tight to the actual surfaces that I've painted and I'll crop off any white or blank areas. So once you've got the part selected that you want, go ahead and hit scan. So once that's done scanning, it'll get out here on our desktop and then we're ready to pull that into Lightroom or Photoshop to edit it. And usually I will do some just slight tweaks on exposure and sharpness and make sure that I clean up any blemishes that I don't want on there or a mistake or a dot where I didn't want a dot. And then I will be good to go to do some test prints. So 
we can see that on my computer screen from the angle that we're looking at that it looks a shade darker but it looks right on for colors um, it probably would look a little brighter if I came in at a straighter angle and so overall this is a beautiful scan and we're ready to edit it and do some other stuff all right so I want you to go search through some of your artworks and start scanning some stuff in this is one way that we can get our artwork in the computer we can also photograph it and we'll take a look at that next